Gothic is an old game and all of its lore has been, so far, pretty much explored. I don't think we'll be able to extract anything more out of it. Nevertheless, there's still one thing that caught my attention. is the factions that players can join. There are three factions in Gothic. The Old Camp, ruled by Gomez and his henchmen, New Camp, organized around mages of water plants and mercenaries hired to protect them, and finally, Brotherhood of the Sleeper Camp, under spiritual guidance of the leader, Iberion. Factions are mainly a particular way of choosing character class. They're also a certain approach to the narrative. Let's focus a bit on something slightly different, though. Considering the lore of Gothic, which of aforementioned factions are better in terms of politics, its economy, social matters and morality? Today we'll take a look at the Old Camp. Old Camp, due to tight cooperation with Mertana Kingdom, is undoubtedly the strongest settlement in the Mining Valley. It's superb in logistics, infrastructure, politics and organization of social and economical life in the Mining Valley. Because Gomez and his henchmen successfully blackmailed King Robert II, Old Camp's inhabitants' lifestyle is on the highest level, at least for the privileged groups such as shadows, guards and ore barons. Though, is it really that good to live in such a place? In the very beginning, Diego promises the hero quite significant riches, but it seems to be nothing more than just an act. Doubts arise when we start to seriously wonder about the aforementioned act of blackmailing. For those who are gold diggers, it won't be much of a problem. In the end, such people are known for striving to get best social status as fast as possible. It is worth noticing, though, that in reality the foundational idea of the old camp contradicts the very goal of the game, the escape from the mining valley. Or barons don't want anybody to run away from the colony. They want to keep a tight grip on the king because they know how much influence and riches they get by that. In the result, such a situation creates the atmosphere of authoritarianism or even straightforward tyranny that's only sugar-coated to create an illusion of splendor. Shadows such as Diego are supposed to make sure that anybody who ends up in the mining valley will be convinced to join the old camp. Gomez and his people know that without the working force, they won't be able to extract enough of the magic ore. Attempts to join other factions are mostly discouraged and persecuted. Initially, newcomers will be informed how futile and senseless are the efforts of other factions. But when somebody really becomes a member of the old camp, his fate is pretty much sealed. Diggers can't even leave the settlement unless they will receive a permit to leave with the rest of the caravan of diggers in order to extract the magic ore. While talking with Dusty, one of the diggers, we get to know a bit about diggers' income. It turns out that they earn so little, they can barely hold out of it and pay off the false tribute to the guards. Guards, despite the fact that they are supposed to keep things under control, they focus on actions that are simply morally corrupt. They can't wait until somebody else's wealth will fall into their hands by some kind of extortion. We can see that especially in the behavior of Jackal and Bloodwin, which force all diggers to give them 10 ore nuggets in exchange for so-called protection. In reality, it's all just a game. They act as guards only to protect those who paid. The rest of the diggers are on their own. Of course, denying the payment will result in a battery. It's also pretty visible how corrupt are the gateway guards. In order to help Dusty run away from the Brotherhood of the Sleeper Camp, it's necessary to bribe the guard by giving him 100 ore nuggets. Same happens with Taurus. He will let the nameless hero through into the inner castle if he will pay him a ridiculous price of 1000 ore nuggets. It's hard not to see that the guard's behavior is somewhat similar to the so-called Stanford prison experiment. Criminals holding the positions of the guards are in reality specially trained, selected group of people organized in order to repress the weaker. 
Guards perfectly realize they can profit from financial frauds, scam and exploitation, so they do it. Simple as that. In any case, they can resort themselves to physical falls. Their supervisors seem to be neglectful of a multiple different pathologies they commit. The best example is Taurus himself, who seems to be content with the fact that his subordinates know how to take care of themselves. We have observed a similar situation in post-Soviet countries plagued by so-called Dedovshchina, the reign of grandfathers. Military supervisors didn't only allow to bully those of the lowest ranks, they were also content because of that. Why, you may ask? Because they didn't have to discipline the lowest ranks on their own. Let's take a quick look at the Ore Barons. They are ruthless, cold-blooded people, equal in mentality to mafia or any kind of well-organized crime. Gomez has absolutely no mercy. When the nameless hero offers him his service, he can be killed quickly if he won't present himself properly or will try to lie to Gomez. There's no space for even the smallest sugar coating. You get straight to the point or you die. It's visible how vastly the image of Gomez differs from Lee or Iberian, who don't seem to have any interest in killing the nameless hero. What's worth noticing is that even for the standards of mining colony, Gomez is in fact cruel. A good sign of that is the fact that people are generally very upset if you kill somebody. They will start saying, you can not just kill people like that, you'll have some serious troubles because of it shows that murder is not some kind of norm in the old camp. Nevertheless, we get to know the true capabilities of Gomez when he orders murdering the mages of fire when those stood against his decision to attack the mine in the new camp. It's a classic example of how those in power tend to eliminate others who seem to be dangerous to the rule. In the history, there were multiple of different assassination attempts on political or economic opponents. Though, presently, not many people are so brave to aim for such feats. More often, they resort themselves to spear campaigns that tend to destroy somebody's reputation. So what kind of settlement is the old camp then? When we will take into account all mentioned facts, it's a peculiar type of tyranny. The mining valley is a prison in itself. Gomez and his fellows are also inmates, but they are privileged enough to stay convinced that, despite everything, they want to stay where they are. The cooperation between Gomez and King Robert II is, in my opinion, superficial. If Gomez could profit from selling magic ore to somebody else, he would do it too. He wouldn't hesitate to throw people into the mines no matter what. Old Camp is in fact the embodiment of everything that is bad in roughly organized societies. In the end, it's a settlement of criminals playing righteous and dignified aristocracy. They use physical force and ruse in order to rule over others. Naturally, the consequence of such actions is the implementation of authoritarian regime, of plutocracy and oligarchy. People say that the Brotherhood of the Sleeper is inhabited by mad people. It is true, indeed, though Old Camp is quite similar, because it's built and ruled by people who are willing to remain as inmates. Now, would you like to live in such a camp and serve the interest of self-worshipping tyrants? I wouldn't like it that way, but in the end, you will answer that question on your own.